There is a logo that is up there on the screen. You see it is DraftKings. It's as beautiful. It's as nice. And we like them a lot. Okay? And they like you a lot. Because they are the top rated sports booking app in the U.S. The way that we like to work. And on top of that, they are safe. They are secure. And they are reliable, Deke. There is nothing better. When you hit on that parlay, the same game parlay too. Or, you know, when you just have that one-off, you just feel good about this prop bet. You're like, man, I think that my dog going to throw a tighty today. Sometimes it just is like that. And DraftKings give you those opportunities. But more importantly, they give you a promo code. And that promo code is Moats. You use that. When you make that first deposit of $5, you're going to get a smooth $200 in Draft. Kings deposit money. And that is a great situation because you get to use that money to go out there and potentially make more money. It's a good situation. It's like a win win. You catch my drift? 100%. But Deke, I also know at times some people go past 100% and they're not able to turn that switch off. It stays on for too long. Mm-hmm. Well, when those people go through those experiences, sometimes you have to ask yourself if you or someone you may know has a gambling problem. They might need some crisis counseling. Shoot, Deke, they might even need referral services. Now, if they're living in New York, on the screen right now, there is a certain number that they could call or text for my New Yorkers. New York, New York. But for everybody else, the number that you need to call is 1-800-GAMBLER. I said a 1-800-GAMBLER. Jake Malesio, so what's next for us? What should we expect for real? Um, So to me, man, I look at it like this. You got to keep building. You have to keep diving in the way that they did yesterday because it's going to give you more context. You're learning more about this roster because, like I talked about with that same Bengals team, right? When Joe Burrow first came in there, or even the year before Joe Burrow got there, they were still playing some of the games. In fact, remember, they beat us, right? And we were like— That was without Joe Burrow. Yeah, and we were like, yo, how the heck did this happen, right? But they were still evaluating. They were trying to figure out— who were going to be the guys that were going to be there when they actually got good? Because tanking for the sake of tanking just means you're going to be Jacksonville. It's going to mean you're going to be Cleveland. You're going to be the Jets. You're going to have a lot of first-round talented players, but a piss-poor team. Culture, too. If that's what you want, you can't out over there. But the thing that I look at is this, man. You compete. You try to win as much as you can because you're learning the culture. You're learning how to win. And on top of that, as a coaching staff, you're looking and you're saying, well, who are the guys that are going to be dogs and who are the guys that are going to pack it up because it's not convenient, because we're not winning, because it's not as easy and the fans aren't as, you know, glamored or enamored with us. You want to see that because you think when you get to the postseason, it's a lot of blowouts. Nah, nah, nah. In fact, it's a lot of adversity. In the postseason, it's a lot of one score. Can we get out of this thing? We got to be as thick as thieves because – Ain't nobody going to be around here to support us. We know how crazy it's going to get. When you got to go in a real hostile environment, I'm speaking from experience. And that is a part of it. But we didn't just get there overnight. Nah, you think about 2012, you think about 2013. Then you think about 2014 and 2015. Then 16 to 17. It is a process, but you have to learn how to win. You have to learn how to execute under pressure and then repeat process. You got to learn how, hey, man, even this is a bad matchup. And I know it's T. Higgins in the slot. How do I defend this? Where's my help at? What do we, how many times we've had DBs from the Steelers come over on this show and they'll say, hey man, you can't get beat to your leverage and you got to be competitive away from your leverage. Yesterday, we didn't get that always. Sometimes we had guys open up the gate getting beat right at the line of scrimmage. The other part was, hey man, some of them guys just made plays at the catch point where you see guys in position, but hey, that's just a better player than this player. If it was George Pickens, we're like, yo, great play. Because it's T. Higgins, we're like, Arthur Mullet, you suck. Make it make sense, right? But either way, that is a part of it. So when we talk about what's next in this team, man, you lock in. They keep grinding because that's going to put us in position next year as well. When you're talking about, hey, man, let's go on a run. Can we be good? Can we win the division? Can we do these things? You don't just start that overnight. It is a process. And unfortunately for us, we're going through it this year. And it's uncharacteristic because – Hey, we are spoiled. We haven't had a losing season since when, right? And it's so funny that we're to the point that we get annoyed by even hearing no losing season, but we holler about wanting to win a Super Bowl. You can't get to a Super Bowl if you don't have the first prerequisite, which is what? A winning season. So even with that, it's just like at times our mind is so 
skewed and flawed that the one thing that we should enjoy or hang our hat on at times we look at as a negative. But that's what the culture is right now for us. So you take it as it is, you know? Maybe people should have appreciated seven a little bit more. But uh <clears throat> no, in terms of this season, I'm with you, man. It's it's only win win mm-hmm. to keep on trying to win. Mm-hmm. Because all these games, if you just look at them individually, are very, very, very winnable. Very well, much just so. The Bengals not a winnable game. Let's that was that play. was even Come a winnable on, game. And Bengals are a good team, yeah. but they're probably the mm-hmm. toughest team that was left on our schedule in the second mm-hmm. half. So we could win all these games. It's just tough because winning in the NFL is tough, yeah. let alone winning seven right. in a row. But Man, you got to you got to start with one, details. one at a time. Mm-hmm. That's literally it. Because then, if it doesn't happen perfectly, mm-hmm. which that's possible, yeah, you're building something. I, mm-hmm. It's everything that you said. You're, you're seeing who's the dogs on the mm-hmm. roster and who isn't. What can you build upon for next season? Mm-hmm. What type of experience could pick a get? Yeah. What type of type of connection can you start building with the receivers? Mm-hmm. And we're seeing that grow. Week in and week out. Fryer Muth and yeah. Pickett. Like, it's becoming a staple right now that these dudes are going to be around 70, 80 yards. But, but, but now just think about this. If you skip that because, oh, man, we're 3-7 and seven and I want to have this attitude of, what's the draft? Let's just worry about draft position in top five. You're never going to get that development. And now next year you'll be having a top five pick and you'll be saying, man, why isn't George Pickens and Kenny Pickett having a better rapport? Why isn't Pat Frymuth taking the next step? Why isn't Najee Harris this elite running back? Well, because you cut the productivity down because you cut down the development process because you want to take for a top five draft. Pick and am I wrong? It's not even possible to do in the NFL. But but but, but on top of that, on top of it's that, it's not even possible. But but Deke, but Deke, on top of that, <laughs> you literally have to sit Kenny Pickett in Deke, the, these receivers. Deke, You'd have on to top sit of the that, though, team. Deke. On top of that, Deke. How many times have we talked about even when you are drafting a player in the first round? Is there a guarantee that this guy's going to come in and be perfect day one starter? No, there is not. Whether we're talking top five or in the back of the first round, there was zero guarantee. The same way we highlight our first round bus, you don't think the Cleveland Browns can highlight their top 10 first round bus? Like, you catch my drift? So when we talk about the concept of putting all your eggs in the basket of a Hell, we have our own first pick, round bus. It's just like, bro, what are we thinking? Like, that's the logic that I still struggle to understand. Why jeopardize a whole season for another 50-50 player? Or, oh, because it's a first-round pick, he's 60-40, 70-30. How many first-round picks do we talk about being a bus? We say the league average for the whole league. First-round draft picks, undrafted guys included, two and a half years. So that's letting you know the amount of bust that happened in the first round. But yet this concept of, hey, man, <laughs> if we just get a top five pick, our, our all our prayers are answered. It's like, well, if that's the case, why hasn't Jacksonville won a Super Bowl? Why hasn't Cleveland won a Super Bowl? Why hasn't New York Jets won a Super Bowl? You know how many times they picked in the top five, top ten? The New York Giants. Why haven't they went back to a Super Bowl? Like, that's the thing. So it's like we cannot lose sight of that just because we're looking for something to give hope to us. And that is a part of expectations. That's a part of just understanding the thought process with this day, man. 